We're in the middle of a huge solar storm that has brought gorgeous aurora all around the world. And a spotless sun has caused the solar flux to drop completely off the map. Will it ever come back? Those stories and more in the news this week. The sun's activity has really picked up this week, mainly because of this huge coronal hole here. It has rotated into the Earth's strike zone and is now sending us some fast wind. We have bumped up to a G2 uh, level solar storm. It is now kind of calming down just a little bit, but we expect to see more sporadic aurora over the next couple days. Outside of that, the activity on the sun is pretty quiet. We have absolutely no active regions in Earth view, which has caused the solar flux to absolutely die. You poor amateur radio operators are probably struggling right now. We've actually dropped below the marginal levels. The good news is Stereo A is showing some bright regions on the backside, and they should be rotating into Earth view here in the next week. Switching to your M flare threat meter, you can see we are very quiet, folks. We are well below the seafloor. In fact, we're not getting anything at all in terms of flares. And with a spotless sun, you would expect that. The nice thing is that this uh, X ray flux is, is going to rise a little bit. That also means the solar flux in general is going to rise here in about the next four days when these new regions begin to rotate into Earth view. Switching to your solar storm conditions, you can see over the last week we've been very quiet. I mean, literally nothing's been going on until finally that fast wind that we've been promising, it hit us on the 7th. That's because that coronal hole rotated into the Earth's strike zone so that that fast wind could reach us. It bumped us up to storm conditions pretty quickly and even made it up to a G2 level storm. This has brought gorgeous aurora all around the world and now we're going to go through even a second night tonight. Things have died down just a little bit right now but it doesn't surprise me if we bump back up to storm conditions or at least active conditions kind of sporadically here over the next few days it's because aurora will still come and it will still cause some issues for you amateur radio operators. And this moderate level solar storm has brought us some gorgeous aurora all around the world. I'm just going to give you a sneak peek and show you a couple quick snippets, but more are coming. We'll start with Cumbria in the United UK and west of Liverpool in England. The aurora even reached as far south as northern Germany in Europe. Now, over the pond, I'm just showing you a couple shots. Here's a gorgeous shot from Iowa. And the aurora even reached as far south as Nebraska. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And what you can immediately see is the backside of the sun is a lot busier than the side that's facing Earth right now. In fact, we have several bright regions, these active regions, and one of them is actually spitting off what looks like might be little mini solar storms. So this is really good news for you amateur radio operators because as these regions rotate back into Earth view, you're going to get the brightness coming up, the solar flux coming up, which is going to help radio propagation. That's one good thing. Another good thing is that we might actually see some eruptions so we could actually get another set of solar storms. Switching to your solar storm and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are in the middle of that fast wind from that corona hole that is rotated into the Earth strike zone. We reached moderate level storm conditions just yesterday, and we do still plan to continue the storming. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting storm conditions with even a 55% chance of a moderate level storm over the next couple days before things begin to die down. At mid latitudes, we are expecting minor storm conditions, maybe about a 15% chance of a major storm there and then things again will continue to settle down so you aurora photographers don't put your cameras away yet we still have a few more days of storming switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, although the screen is green, I hear you amateur radio operators groaning. That's because this spotless sun has caused the solar flux to drop completely off the map. We don't have any flare risk, but we also don't have any solar flux. That's why the solar flux here is labeled in orange. We've dropped out of the marginal range and down into poor conditions. The only positive thing is that the regions on the backside, they'll be rotating into Earth view here in the next four to five days, which 
which should give a nice little boost to the solar flux and pop it back up to marginal conditions. On the other hand, you GPS operators, especially at low latitudes, you're loving this quiet right now, and that solar storm that's happening is probably stabilizing that upper atmosphere just enough in places like Brazil and northern Australia to allow you to use your GPS at night. So the space weather this week is extremely exciting. We have a huge solar storm that's been bringing us some gorgeous aurora from all around the world, and it continues to rage. So you aurora photographers, don't put your cameras away yet. Now you amateur radio operators, I know you're groaning. I can hear you. I know the solar flux has fallen completely off the map, and this solar storm is not helping propagation one bit. But hang in there. If you can get through the end of this week, next week will bring a brighter day, literally, and it should help radio propagation when these new regions rotate into Earth view. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.